Austin is a fun city to be in. Austin, Texas has always been known for amazing music, great food, and now food trucks and trailers. People who like to eat at trailers in Austin like a more laid back environment to eat in. They want to be able to pop in and go as they please, stop in for lunch, or maybe even for a happy hour after work. I'm Kristen. And I'm Cody. And we're empanadas. And we make gourmet empanadas here in Austin, Texas. Yes, we do. The economics of things definitely worked out with buying a mobile truck instead of a brick and mortar. It's pretty hard to buy a brick and mortar restaurant with a credit card, which is the way that we bought the empanada truck. One of the things that's a bit different with empanadas is we don't actually make a lot of our product on the truck. The truck is just there for heat and serve, and we make most of our product in a commercial kitchen. The tricky part about making empanadas is that you need the fillings to be like moist and delicious but dry enough so you don't get blowouts and explosions and a basic nightmare. Kristen generally makes the fillings. She is in control of what goes on inside and I guess I'm in control of what goes on outside the empanada. I used to live in Central America in Costa Rica and fell in love with the empanada. And we both were foodies and we loved to cook. So we decided that we should make our empanadas for everybody else. So this is our pineapple cinnamon. Super simple and super delicious. Pineapples, cinnamon, sugar, and a little thickener and you're good to go. So with the folding of these, I'm always sure to sort of pull forward with the filling and then fold over. We give them a final seal with a fork. And yes, we fork every single every empanada. Every single one. Pineapple cinnamon. just send out a quick tweet of our new location. Moving into a food business was a little daunting because we don't have a food background. My background is mechanical engineering. I teach Pilates and I'm a and modern dance. dancer. We decided that we wanted a truck to really get our product out there to the people and we found the truck on eBay. Minneapolis is a great food town. We have amazing chefs, we have great restaurants. We live in the Midwest where the farms are 20 minutes from the downtown area. And starting now, it's a place where you can get a food truck and a cool food truck. Hi, I'm Chris Lockyer and this is Kathy Lockyer. We own the Magic Bus Cafe in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Magic Bus in Minneapolis is run by a family of what you'd probably call hippies. The Magic Bus Cafe serves hot dogs and tofu dogs because everybody loves hot dogs. When we got a hold of the bus, we thought, you know, our business needs to reflect who we are. And anybody who knows us, this screams Kathy and Chris. Minneapolis is currently going through some legislative uh, changes. You're seeing a few more trucks and a few more street vendors come on the scene. We use all beef hot dogs and we split and fry our hot dogs. We caramelize them just a little bit on the griddle. We use a lot of organic ingredients. We use a lot of local ingredients and we make interesting toppings with them. We do one that's sauerkraut with beets and garlic and onions. We do a relish that we add mango chutney and curry powder to. We have a hot dog that we use organic scrambled eggs, local bacon and cheese on. Where's the soul shine dog? I do. Here you go, enjoy. All our hot dogs have fun names to them. Here's a pig pen with psychedelic relish. I'm making our give beets a chance dog. We had to have a purple hot dog. Not a great way to get rich, but a really great way to have a good time while you're making a living. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers on the hot dog. <laughs>
Everything from the fact that you're on four wheels, you have limited storage, everything is cooked on a truck, which I equate to like cooking on a submarine. Can we get another order of fries? What I'm serving here at Fritz and Meats is a top flight gourmet burger. The food here is like absolutely fantastic. I don't think there's a, a better burger in this neighborhood, to be honest. It's delicious. Some of the best creative, innovative food is coming out of tiny little kitchens on four wheels. Rain, I mean, it's the difference between making 1,500 bucks and making $75. Top sellers are the red velvet pancake bites. These are insane. I'm gonna stock up for tomorrow morning so I have to cook any breakfast. People actually don't realize how difficult it is to be a street vendor. And one of the things that makes it most difficult in New York is the weather. Rain, snow, I mean, it's the difference between making 1,500 bucks and making $75. It is a rainy day, as you can see. Um, and, you know, it's one of these days where you wake up and you never really want to get out of bed. One of the major, major kind of challenges for running a truck business is that your line and your customers are all outside. And so we end up kind of really being subject to a lot of different conditions, such as rain or snow or super hot weather. There you go. Thanks for coming out in the rain. Thank you very much. That's what happens when you get a truck. We're always here, rain and shine. Hey, my name is Howard Jerry. I'm here at Savvy J's in Portland, Oregon, Southern Cuisine Food. I have my own thing. It's kind of like the Northwest meets the Southern coastal cuisine. We have po' boys, jambalaya, pulled pork sandwiches, you know, just all the good stuff. I've been all across the country cooking in major casinos. I got laid off from my job, and here I am. I got a taco truck and converted it into something I wanted to do. I got one catfish poor boy. All right, one catfish poor boy. Savvy J's is just like, it's my dream child. I've always wanted a restaurant. You know, banks won't give you money for a restaurant. They open and close every day, blah, blah, blah. I had enough money to get a truck. And here I am, and now I'm doing something for myself. This is the best catfish po' boy you get in Portland. Actually, it's made with love. Better fly it open a little bit. That way it'll be evenly cooked. Drop it in the cornmeal flour mixture. After that, they go into the deep fryer. It's top quality catfish. It's farm raised, deep from the south. I kind of like Hang it up here to where it kind of like piles up, makes it look like, you know, you're getting a mouthful. There you go. Catfish po' boy. Okay, right here we have Savannah, which is who I named the truck after. I do this all for my kids. This is why I'm out here in the rain doing my thing. The food truck industry is really gonna change the way people look at getting food. Part of the excitement is definitely being able to have a truck, you know, pull up and uh, have a different meal than you would nine times out of 10. We've got a line outside, so we're trying to rush to get everything set up. Dave is uh, about to cook off some chicken along with some broccoli. And I think I gotta get some TVs going outside. Yes. Hey, what's, hey, what's the ETA? So I could just let them know outside. Um, I can do beef right now, I can't do chicken. It's about eight minutes. About eight minutes. The Vizzy truck, what's cool about them is their curbside experience. They have two big screen TVs where they're showing sports or other television shows. We try to make it the most or the fullest experience we could possibly make it on the inside and the out. We're ready when you guys are. Okay. All of our dishes are prepared and it's, it's visually appealing. We have a Wagyu beef slider that is basically a domestic Kobe beef that we slow braise. It's got a, like a maple balsamic finish to it. The other slider we have is a Jidori chicken slider, which is a uh, hormone-free, free-range chicken. We marinate that. It's just grapeseed oil and garlic. We also have uh, organic chickpea sliders, which is vegetarian. We came up with that, and that's actually been one of our better sellers. 
Here you go. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for waiting. You too. Beaten chicken and broccoli. It's actually really good. It's really good. Lots of flavor. It came out really fast. Piadina coming in. We just got an order for a Caprese Piadina. It's one of our specialties. We're gonna take our lavash, toast this bad boy up. Gets two cheeses, it gets melted brie and queso fresco. Our piadina is our version of a quesadilla. We've even joked around and called it a quesadina. It's supposed to be open face, but we serve ours closed. It's easier to eat that way, it's easier to present that way. Next, we're gonna add our tomatoes. We sear these just enough, not to run all the juices and flavor out of them but to give them almost kind of like a heavier sun-dried tomato-y kind of effect on the outside. We season everything. In all of our piadinas, we put cilantro and green onions. Next, we're gonna add a layer of this opal basil. Just picked it. We have a little pickled red onions. We pickle these on the truck. Kind of complements that salty cheese and a little of our balsamic reduction. Chimichurri from fresh. We're probably gonna hear a nice little crunch. Yeah, and this is our Caprese Piadina. I lost my job, and so I started Koi Fusion basically out of necessity. First Friday is a massive event, and it's like we can't keep up. Sushi out of a trailer for $20. Who would have thunk it? <laughs>